Hi everybody, it's Agnes. I'm reading you a little bit from this book, You Are the Placebo, Making Your Mind Matter by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Now, I want to read the little part about his own story because those of you that are having health issues or things that are termed as illnesses, diseases, incurable, you're going to have to put up with this for the rest of your life, whatever you've heard, I want you to listen to this because it's very, very, very inspiring. Okay? It's his part of his story and it's called Waking Up and it's at the beginning of the book. Now, it goes like this. I, this is him in his own words. I never planned on doing any of this. The work I'm currently involved in as a speaker, author and researcher sort of found me. In order for some of us to wake up, sometimes we need a wake up call. And in 1986, I got the call. On a beautiful Southern California day in April, I had the privilege of being run over by an SUV in a Palm Springs triathlon. That moment changed my life and started me on this whole journey. I was 23 at the time with a relatively new chiropractic practice in La Jolla, California, and I'd trained hard for this triathlon for months. I'd finished the swimming segment and I was on the biking portion of the race when it happened. I was coming up to a tricky turn where I knew we'd be merging with traffic. A police officer with his back to the oncoming cars waved me to turn right and follow the course. Since I was fully exerting myself and focused on the race, I never took my eyes off him. As I passed two cyclists on that particular corner, a red four-wheel drive Bronco going about 55 miles an hour slammed into my bike from behind. The next thing I knew, I was catapulted into the air and I landed squarely on my backside. Because of the speed of the vehicle and the slow reflexes of the elderly woman driving the Bronco, the SUV kept coming towards me and I was soon reunited with his bumper. I quickly grabbed the bumper in order to avoid being run over and to stop my body from passing through metal and asphalt. So I was dragged down the hill a bit before the driver realized what was happening. When she finally did abruptly stop, I tumbled out of control for about 20 yards. I can still remember the sound of the bikes whizzing by and the horrified screams and profanities of the riders passing me not knowing whether they should stop and help or continue the race. As I lay there, all I could do was surrender. I would soon discover that I had broken six vertebrae. I had compressed fractures in the thorax 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and lumbar 1, ranging from my shoulder blades all the way to my kidneys. The vertebrae are stacked like individual blocks in the spine and when I hit the ground with that kind of force, they collapsed and compressed from the impact. The eighth vertebra, the top segment that I broke, was more than 60% collapsed and the circular arch that contained and protected the spinal cord was broken and pushed together in a pretzel shape. Then a vertebra compress, when a vertebra compresses and fractures, the bones has to go somewhere. In my case, a large volume of shattered fragments went back towards my spinal cord. It definitely was not a good picture. As if I were in a bad dream, I woke up the next morning with a host of neurological symptoms, including several different types of pain, de varying degrees of numbness, tingling, and some loss of feeling in my legs, and some sobering difficulties in controlling my movements. After I had all the blood tests, x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, the orthopedic surgeon showed me the results and somberly delivered the news in order to contain the bone fragments that were now in my spinal cord, I needed surgery to implant a Harrington rod. That would mean cutting out the back parts of the vertebrae from two to three segments above and below the fractures and then screwing and clamping in two 12 inch stainless steel rods along both sides of my spinal column. Then they'd scrape some fragments off my hip bone and paste them over the rods. It would be major surgery and it would mean I would at least have a chance to walk again. Even so, I knew I probably still would be somewhat disabled and I'd have to live with chronic pain for the rest of my life. Needless to say, I didn't like that option. But if I chose not to have the surgery, paralysis seemed certain. The best neurologist in the Palm Springs area who concurred with the first surgeon's option told me that he knew of no other patient in the US in my condition who had refused it. The impact of the accident had compressed my T8 vertebra into a wedge shape that would be preventing my spine from being able to bear the weight of my body. 
if I were to stand up. My backbone would collapse, pushing those shattered bits deep into my spinal cord, causing instant paralysis from my chest down. That was hardly an attractive option either. I was transferred to a hospital in La Jolla, closer to my home, where I received two additional options, including one of the leading orthopedic surgeons in South Carolina. Not surprised, both doctors agreed I should have the Harrington Rod surgery. It was pretty consistent prognosis. They have the surgery have the surgery or be paralyzed and never walk again. If I had been the medical professional making that recommendation, I'd have said the same thing. It was the safest option, but it wasn't the option I chose for myself. Maybe I was just young and bold at that time in life, but I decided against the medical model and the expert recommendations. I believe there is an intelligence and invisible consciousness within each of us, and that's the giver of life. It supports maintains protects and heals us every moment it creates almost a hundred trillion specialized cells starting from only two it keeps our heart beating hundreds of thousands of times a day and it can organize hundreds of thousands of chemical reactions in a single cell in every second amongst many other amazing functions i reasoned at that time that if this intelligence was real and if it was willfully mindfully and lovingly demonstrated such amazing abilities maybe i could take my attention off my external world and begin to go within and connect with it developing a relationship with it but while i intellectually understood that the body often had the capacity to heal itself now i had to apply every bit of philosophy that I knew in order to take that knowledge to the next level and beyond to create a true experience with healing and since I wasn't going anywhere and I wasn't doing anything except laying face down I decided on two things first every day I would put all my conscious attention on this intelligence within me and give it a plan a template a vision with very specific orders and then I would surrender my healing to this greater mind that had unlimited power allowing it to do the healing for me Second, I, would let, I wouldn't let any thought slip th by my awareness that I didn't want to experience. Sounds easy, right? A radical decision. Against the advice of the medical team, I left the hospital in an ambulance that brought me to the home of two closest friends where I stayed for the next three months to focus on my healing. I was on a mission. I decided I would begin every day reconstructing my spine, my vertebra one by one and I would show this consciousness if it was paying attention to my efforts what I wanted I knew that it would demand my absolute presence that is for me to be present in the moment not thinking about or regretting my past worrying about my future obsessing about the conditions in my external life or focusing on my pain or symptoms just as in any relationship we have with anybody we all know that someone is present or not with us right because consciousness is awareness, awareness is paying attention. And paying attention is being present and noticing this consciousness would be aware of when I was present and when I wasn't. I would have to be totally present when I interacted with this mind. My presence would have to match its presence, my will would have to match its will, and my mind would have to match its mind. So for two hours twice a day I went within and I began creating a picture of my intended result a totally healed spine of course I became aware of how unconscious and unfocused I was it's ironic I realized back then that when crises or trauma occurs we spend too much of our attention and energy thinking about what we don't want instead of what we do want during those first several weeks I was guilty of this tendency on what seemed like a moment-to-moment -moment basis in the middle of my meditations on creating the life I wanted with fully healed spine, I would all of a sudden become aware that I'd been unconsciously thinking about what the surgeons had told me a few weeks before. Then I would probably never walk again. I would be in the midst of inwardly reconstructing my spine and the next thing I knew I was stressing out over whether I should sell my chiropractic practice. While I was step by step mentally rehearsing walking again, I would catch myself imagining what it would be like to live the rest of my life sitting in a wheelchair. You get the idea. So every time I lost my attention and my mind wandered to an extraneous thought, I would start from the beginning and do the whole scheme of imagery over again. It was tedious, frustrating, and quite frankly, one of the most difficult things I've ever done. 
but I reasoned that the picture that I wanted the observer in me to notice had to be clear, unpolluted, uninterrupted. In order for this intelligence to accomplish what I had hoped, what I knew, it was capable of doing from start to finish. I had to stay conscious and not go unconscious. Finally, after six weeks of battling with myself and making the effort to be present with this consciousness, I was able to make it through an inward reconstruction process without having to stop and start over from the beginning. I remember the day I did it for the first time. It was like hitting a tennis ball in that sweet spot. There was something right about it. It clicked, I clicked, I felt complete, satisfied, whole for the first time. I was truly relaxed and present in mind and body. There was no mental chatter. No analyzing, no thinking, no obsessing, no trying. Something lifted and a kind of peace and silence prevailed. It was as if I no longer cared about all the things I should have been worried about in my past and my future. And that realization solidified the journey for me because right around the time I was creating this vision of what I wanted, reconstructing my vertebrae, it started to get easier every day. Most important, I started to notice some pretty significant psychological changes in this moment that I began to correlate what I was doing inside of me to create this change with what was taking place outside of me in my body. The instant I made that correlation, I paid greater attention to what I was doing and did it with more conviction and I did it again and again. As a result, I kept doing it with a level of joy and inspiration instead of dread and compromised effort. All of a sudden, what had originally taken me two or three hours to accomplish in one session, I was able to do it in a shorter period. Now I had quite a bit of time on my hands, so I started to think about what it would be like to see a sunset again from the water's edge or eat lunch with my friends at a table in a restaurant. And I thought about how I would never take any of that for granted. In detail, I imagined taking a shower and feeling the water running on my face and body or simply sitting up while using the toilet or taking a walk on the beach in San Diego, the wind blowing on my face. These were some things that I had never fully appreciated before the accident, but now they had meaning and I took my time to emotionally embrace them until I felt as if I was already there. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but now I do. I was actually starting to think about all those future potentials that existed in the quantum field and then I was emotionally embracing each of them. And as I selected that intentional future and married it with the elevated emotion of what it would be like to be there in the future, in the present moment my body began to believe it was actually in the future experience. As my ability to observe my desired destiny got sharper and sharper, my cells began to reorganize themselves. I began to signal new genes in new ways, and then my body really started getting better faster. What I was learning is one of the main principles of quantum physics, that mind and matter are not separate elements, that our conscious and unconscious thoughts are fe and feelings <sighs> Ah the very blueprints that control our destiny. The persistence, conviction and focus to manifest any potential future lies within the human mind and within the mind of infinite potentials in the quantum field. Both of these minds must work together in order to bring about any future reality that potentially exists. I realize that in that way we are all divine creators, independent of race, gender, culture, social status, education, religious beliefs, or even past mistakes. I felt really blessed for the first time in my life. I made other key decisions about my healing as well. I set up a whole regime described in detail in Evolving Your Brain. That's his other book. That included diet, visit from friends who practice energy healing, and an elaborate rehabilitation program but nothing was more important to me during that time than getting in touch with that intelligence within me through it using my mind to heal my body. At nine and a half weeks after the accident, I got up and walked back into my life without having any body cast or any surgery. I had fully reached recovery. I started seeing patients again at 10 weeks and I was back to training and lifting weights again while continuing my rehabilitation at 12 weeks. And now, almost 30 years after the accident, I can honestly say 
that I've hardly ever had back pain since. Amazing. So, I just love that story. I'd forgotten about it. So, and reading this book again has been a good reminder of the power of the mind over the body, connecting with infinite intelligence, God, source, whatever word you prefer to use. And that is Joe Dispenza. Now, I will put a link to his YouTube channel. He does this work with people. And I'm going to uh, put a few testimonials for people that have recovered from amazing things as well. So those of you that want to check it out. If you actually have a particular condition or something you're suffering from, you can go to YouTube and put in Joe Dispenza car accident or a testimonial or a Joe Dispenza cancer testimonial or go you know whatever it is put in your condition your disease whatever's happened because there are many 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 testimonials from people that have worked with him all right lots of love everybody and um, hope you're inspired by his amazing mind and incredible focus it is a good lesson in listening to that if he can do it four hours a day then we can certainly do 30 minutes to an hour a day Okay, lots of love.